Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. All right, first thing to address is that in the last episode, I neglected to set an alarm for the Drez flight in its next maneuver node. And I have gone back in and I have corrected that prior to doing anything here. The next item up on the alarm clock is the Sundiver recovery mission in six days, 10 days for the Drez mission, and in 13 days, launch of a ship from Kerbin to Eve. So that should be plenty enough to keep us busy. And now, let's adjourn to the vehicle assembly building. And here we have a new ship, recently designed. I'm calling it the Hoover One, because it sucks the science out of objects in space near Kerbin. And that's what it's for. It's got the Mark I lander can, the one-man can. Let's go ahead and get somebody assigned that isn't Jebediah. And let's go with Durfrey. He's a smart guy. And basically, this thing is intended to get to orbit and rendezvous with the asteroid, allow our pilot to get the science out of it, and then safely return to Kerbin. So, to the launch pad. Okay, here we are. We're all set to go, just about. But, first, before doing that, let's go ahead and set that science rock as a target. And it's orbiting clockwise here, as seen from this point of view. So, I'm going to fast-forward time until the space center is almost, but not quite, directly below the orbit. And then from there, the ship will take off on a 180 degree heading. And uh, try to launch into the same orbit as the rock. All right. A little bit to go. Close. And that should be good right there. All right, now back to the external view. And let's get ready for our sunrise launch. Okay, let's get the Smart ASS set. Taking off on a 180 degree course and our first pitch of 88 degrees. Okay, Durfrey Kerman, let's turn the lights on and get this thing in the air. And let's go. Oops, almost forgot to set free mode on the camera. As we approach one kilometer in altitude, we'll go ahead and, and institute our heading and first pitch right about now. So we do a roll program. And point this baby south. Or begin pointing it south. Pitch it down to 85 degrees now. The idea being to follow that prograde marker on the nav ball. And you may notice that the uh, fancy clouds and whatnot isn't there anymore. Uh, Computer Troubles has forced me to remove that mod because with it I wasn't able to run Kerbal Space Program hardly at all. Let's pitch down to eight zero. All 
Um, dude, you're going the wrong way. Engine's off. Pitch 80 degrees, heading 180. All of this is correct, but... Oh, good grief. We're... All right, let's pitch more like 275. Engage a little bit of engine to help it out. Pitch to 65. Be ready to pitch to 45. Okay, now we're headed in the right direction. Apoapsis is 44 kilometers and climbing. I should have had this up. All right, we're going to salvage this because this thing is overpowered. It's designed with a lot more delta V than it needs. And that's fine. Pitching to 4.5. Okay, doing better. Let's have a look here. And this is slowly turning around as the inclination changes. Okay, we'll manage. Delta V, how are we doing? Inclination changing a lot faster now. We need to get the inclination to about 90. Actually, we want relative inclination to zero. How about that? Pitch down to 25 degrees now. We want our apoapsis somewhere in the 200 kilometer range. Because that's roughly the altitude of our target. A little below 200 would be fine. We're just about ready to lose our booster stages. Okay. Looking okay right now. It's not perfect. There's going to have to be another plane change in here. Or a plane change, but that's all right. Let's pitch down to 15 degrees. Go ahead and extend the solar panels. And I did remember to put some static solar panels on there just in case I forgot. Right now, we just concentrate on getting this bird into orbit. I can think of one thing that I did wrong, and I just now thought of it. This thing has 200 liters of RCS fuel, but it has no RCS jets. That is kind of dumb.
I'm thinking maybe at the beginning I should have uh, pitched a little bit faster. Maybe not too much, but a little bit. If nothing else, this can be practice at, re at rendezvousing with this thing. It's at 238. That's not a circular orbit. So let's cut it off right there. I'm probably going to end up considering this one to be a test launch because, well, it doesn't have the necessary maneuvering capability for anything remotely approaching a docking. Let's see. All right, quick maneuver to get the plane fixed. Get that last 11 degrees of relative inclination. Okay, that's coming down quickly. It's also raising our apoapsis, but we don't care about that. Not at this point, because it's not raising it very fast. main thing is to get the relative inclination down as low as possible. It's going back up, so if we stop. All right. All right. Circularization burnt at apoapsis. Okay, that looks good. Three hundred and fourteen meters a second should put us pretty much in line in orbit, and that still won't use up the last of that stage, although I'm going to go ahead and jettison it just before the periapsis goes too high so that it will re-enter. Fast forward time a bit. And we'll be doing this over the South Pole, it looks like.
just before periapsis hits about, right when it hits about 28 to 30 kilometers, we'll go ahead and jettison this. And that way it will return. Ugh. Well, that was bad. Now, can I maneuver this thing out from... Oh, I should have... I gotta remember. Shut down before staging. Duh. Uh, things are not looking good for Durfrey Kerman. Just see if we can do something to get that capsule out from over this thing, but I got a feeling it's not going to happen because that engine is burning. And I'll bet you dollars to donuts this one is burning too. Which means Durfrey Kerman is going to go where no Kerbal has gone before. Yeah. He's going way far away. Above the plane of the ecliptic. Way above the plane of the ecliptic. Oh, yeah. Now it breaks loose. Which means that when Durfrey Kerman returns, let's see, time to periapsis, 16 hours. He's going to go way the heck out and back here. And then come screaming in. Let's see. Uh, what kind of ship is this ship in? The chutes are not deployed, but they're still attached. That's good. And he's still got the grabber unit. Oh, boy. Okay. Durfrey Kerman is going to be okay. He's going to return. He's got a really high altitude run, but he will be coming back. And so, while Durfrey Kerman does his thing, let's go back. I need to fix a couple of things in the vehicle assembly building, and then we'll launch another one of these. <laughs>